Okay, this is Bert, and I want to welcome everybody to Chapter 2, Desire. And today we're going to discuss some of the most important concepts, in my opinion, that Napoleon Hill put forth in this chapter. Because this chapter and one or two other chapters are the ones that I believe are the most important because when this book was published in 19... <laughs> Could you please mute your phone so we don't have to uh, talk to your dog as well? Uh, he put forth the whole concept of goal setting, which back in 1930, I believe he published Laws of Success in like 1928, uh, and then published Think and Grow, which a few years later. Uh, the concept of goal setting was, brought, was not even explored. Goal setting didn't really come into the scene in terms of corporate America until the 1960s when Peter Drucker introduced management by objectives. If anybody Hi, remembers. this is Cosette. Hi, Cosette. Um, so the rules are real simple. Let's start with those. Uh, please mute yourself if you're anywhere doing anything so that other people can hear. Um, when the guest speaker comes on, I ask that everybody mute themselves, and um, this way we can um, all hear what Rick has to say because it's only eight minutes, but it really is a power-packed eight minutes. Uh, okay. We're going to start now with desire, and the main thing in the chapter on desire uh, that Napoleon Hill talks about is his own personal experience with Edwin Barnes. He spent a lot of time with Edwin Barnes. Now, what I'd like to do is I don't want to make this all me talking, so if, if there's anybody here that read the chapter and actually can talk about what they got out of Edwin Barnes, uh, I would appreciate if you just say your name and we'll start with you. And if anybody doesn't talk up, I'm going to... Hey there, my name is Christy Watkins. <laughs> Can you repeat I'm the calling question? from D.C. Sure, shoot, go ahead. Yeah, so, so the question was, anybody that read the second chapter, what, what mm -hmm. did they get from, from it? And this concept that, that I got was, desire is where it all lies. It's this, this part of your DNA to get what it is that you want and that you want it so bad that you're willing to burn the boat. And I think about goals that I've had in the past and I wasn't willing to burn the boat. But it makes, gosh, I'm goosebumps as I'm saying this. If you have if you have this, I'm going to burn the boat, so our troops have gotten someplace, we're really underrepresented um, compared to the enemy, and, but we burn the boat so we have no choice but to win, that thinking will propel you in your goals. And whenever I've done that in business, I've kicked total ass, and it just really resonated for me that if I want something, I've got to have that desire that I've got to get it, and I've got to burn up my boat so I can't go back so that the question that I'm always asking is how, why, make it happen. So that's what I got out of it. Amazing. Excellent, excellent. Uh, that, that really is the most critical lesson of, of this particular chapter. Uh, I relate it to, you know, they say, when is an animal most dangerous? When it's cornered, when it's injured, right? It has nothing to lose. It's cornered. It has to fight. So it's the same concept. I look at burning desire, in, in, and I have a metaphor for it, and my metaphor is if you think back to a time you fell in love, when you woke up in the morning, Bonnie, what was the first thing you thought about? During the day, what did you think about? And before you went to bed at night, what did you think about? You thought about that person that you're in love with or really care about. And so every day this process goes on and the love becomes deeper and stronger. And then the negative part is, let's say you find out that that person is in a bar talking to a girlfriend. Well, you don't fear walking into a bar and slapping him in the face or her in the face because the desire is so strong that you're no longer concerned with pleasing results, uh, pleasing methods. You're only interested in pleasing results. So it's that burning desire, that love, and love is a great analogy for this, because you must fall in love with your goal. 
whatever you decide is your definite main purpose or definite chief aim, you must fall in love with it. So it's the thing that wakes you up in the morning. It's the thing you think about all during the day. And it's the thing you go to sleep at night thinking about. Now, if you look at the process in the six steps, step number six, Napoleon Hill says, do exactly that. Read it first thing in the morning and read it last thing before you get a bed, go to bed at night. And this is where everybody that hasn't gotten results from this book fails because they don't do that critical step. So very good point. I, I, like, I like what you said. Let me just go one step further now. And in addition to burning your bridges, I also wanted to make another co uh, concept or explain another thing. Uh, a lot, I get a lot of people that uh, talk about positive attitude, and they go, well, you know, how can you have a positive attitude when shit is getting you down? And really the key point is that it's, you have to have a positive attitude in spite of the negatives because Robin says this and everybody says this, where your focus goes, that's where you go. And I remember one time I, uh, for a birthday present, my buddies all got me a uh, trip around the track uh, in a NASCAR, which goes 200 miles an hour. And the instructor said to me, okay, we're going to take the, the first turn. Your natural inclination as we get near the wall is you're going to be looking at the wall because you were going to want to make sure you don't hit it as we're going into the turn. But if you look at the wall, you're going to go into the wall. Mm. So, you know, I'm a cocky person. So I said, yeah, I got this. I got the slap on the street, the, the, the double seat belt put on the helmet. You know, and I'm a race car driver, right? I start turning, going into the turn. What do I do? I look at the wall. He grabs the steering wheel because it's a double steering wheel car. He grabs his steering wheel, and he turns away from the wall. And, he, and we come out of the turn. He slows down the car. He looks at me and says, see, if you look at the wall, you're going to hit it. We're going to go into another turn, and this time, do not look at the wall. So, again, I start driving and he's going into the turn, and I start to turn my head, and he takes his hand and jams it into my jaw and forces me to keep my face looking straight ahead. And I did not hit the wall, and it was a beautiful executed turn at approximately 125 miles an hour, which is the fastest I've ever gone, but we went even faster than that later on. So when you're experiencing negatives, our natural inclination is going to be to look at the wall. So what can we do to stop ourselves from looking at the wall unless we have somebody jabbing us in the jaw to keep our head looking straight? Well, that's where your definite major purpose statement comes in. Because as Napoleon Hill says, fear and faith cannot both exist in the mind at the same time. So if you're experiencing fear, just stop and replace it with faith. So take your major definite purpose statement once you've written it and carry it with you. And use that or, or have put it on a 3x5 part if it fits. I doubt it will, but carry it with you. And when you experience that fear, when you experience that negativity, take your, take your literal hand, your, your inanimate hand, push your jaw so you look straight at where you want to go. Because we will get, we, we tend to draw to ourselves that which we set out for ourselves. In light of what Napoleon Hill also says, I was given a, uh, these things a few years ago, and it said, you know, uh, Paul J. Meyer was a mentor of mine when I bought an SMI franchise years ago, and Paul told us in a meeting once, you can't ride two horses at the same time. And a lot of people try to do that. And he also said, you can't sit on both sides of the fence. Sometimes you have to make a decision. And the other thing he said to me was, if you s decide to try this process. You decide to write the definite major purpose statement or goal statement and read it twice a day and you say, you know what, I'll try that for three months or I'll try it for 30 days or I'll try it for six months. Once you say I'll try it for that period in time, you've automatically set in stone the day you will quit. So I've had people that came into financial services and say, you know what, Bert, I'm going to try this for six months. And any time that anybody ever said, I'm going to try this for a certain period of time, they set in stone the day they will quit. 
the way you succeed is you say, I will do this until I succeed. I will not quit. 90% of all failure comes from quitting. How do you stop failing? Don't quit. Real simple. Anybody else have any experiences with stick, sticking or persistence or quitting that wants to share? Uh, Bert, I would just like to mention that uh, I agree with you about the thing about saying that they're going to try and then they're claiming to quit. Uh, whenever I tell my dad I'm going to try to do something, he always looks at me and he says, trying is uh, doing something and then failing to do it. Right. It's always, you know, you're, you're saying you're going to do it, but really you're not. Yeah, so true. Anybody else care to uh, also comment? Well, I yeah, think that going into it, you have to really be 100% committed where you have no backup plan at all. So you don't even think, well, if it doesn't work, then I'll do this. You have to go into it knowing that you're not going to stop until you succeed and not even consider any other options. Yeah, very true. I, I always The word try always brings up in my mind a picture of uh, the first Star Wars with Yoda, and he says, there is no try. There is either do or do not. And I remember uh, one time my sales manager I said to him, you know, he says, uh, how many appointments do you have tonight? And he says, well, I'm going to be on the phone, and I'm going to try to get some more. And he goes, oh, okay, you're going to try? And I said, yeah, I'm going to try. I'm going to try my hardest. I'll stay here till midnight, and I'll keep trying. He said, really? He says, Bert, do me a favor. Try and hold this pen. So he hands me the pen, and I go, I'm holding it. He says, no, 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 no. You're holding it. I want you to try and hold it. I said, what do you mean? He says, Right now you're holding it. There's either holding it or dropping it. But I want you to try to hold it. So it took a little while for my dense brain to figure out that there is no such thing as try. You either hold the pen or you don't hold the pen. Trying is just a bullshit excuse we give ourselves. And, and, I, and that's the real critical importance about a lot of these things, especially the definite major purpose statement, which is what we're going to be focusing on today, is that you can't just try it. You have to commit to it. You have to be willing to say it for the next 365 days, a minimum of two times. And yeah, there's going to be times when you're going to get bored. But when you start hearing the definite major purposes the way we write them now, you're going to get charged up. You're going to get pumped up and motivated. So let's go one step further. And on page 43 in the old version, Napoleon Hill says, to the uninitiated who has been schooled in the working principles of the human mind, these instructions may appear impractical. It may be helpful to all who fail to recognize the soundness of the six steps to know that the information they convey were, was received from Andrew Carnegie, who began as an ordinary laborer in the steel mills, but managed despite his humble beginnings to make these principles yield him a fortune of considerably more than $100 million. By the time, uh, by the time uh, Andrew Carnegie retired, he was worth billions. He's the second richest man ever in history. The six steps is where we are now. And the original version of this was fixing your mind. First, fixing your mind the exact amount of money you desire. Why money? Anybody tell me why Napoleon Hill, other than the title of the book, focused on money? It's something that pretty much everybody can relate to. Kind of, yep. it's kind of the hook, you know, it's like grow rich. And like a lot of people think they need to kind of hook people into it. And one of his oh. goals was to give it, to send that to as many people as possible. So hooking as many people as possible is probably very important when he was coming up with the, with the book. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Most, um, finances yes, give you the opportunity to do so many other things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty much in this society, in this world, uh, you know, some people have a negative connotation to money, but if you think back how money began, we were all on the barter system. You know, I planted corn, you planted, uh, you had cattle, I gave you some corn, you gave me some cattle. The harder you worked at raising cattle and the harder I worked at raising corn, the more surplus corn I would have in order to barter for the other things I needed. So money was just a, 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 a became the way we did it because it was more convenient than always trading cattle and corn. But isn't money and how much you have really a symbol of of your work and your contribution to society? 
Anybody care to comment on that? I, I like to say that um, I, I, I do think it's a, it has a lot to do with um, how you're able to contribute. I mean, you, I feel like you can do, let's say you can earn a lot of money and be bad, you could be evil, but at the same time, um, I look at it as if, if you're able to give a lot, if you're able to be rich, you're able to grow, you're able to do this, that means you're providing a lot of value, you know, if you're you make a goal to if you're you just starting out you you start you make a goal to earn a hundred thousand or or you reach two hundred fifty thousand or a million or whatever your goal is, and if you're able to reach it, you must have done a lot of good uh, along the way. You just didn't benefit yourself. You you're were able to get that that much money back to you because you basically provided a lot of value to a lot of people. So I think I think um, achieving a lot of riches does have to do with. Um, basically contributing, giving back, and, you know, along the way, you, you, you feel good about it, but you also get to give back to society, too. Yeah, yeah, very true, very true. Anybody else? Make sure you just um, say your name when you get on, when you go to speak. Thank you. I'll add, this is um, Jennifer out in Los Angeles. Um, just kind of what you're talking about, being money being symbolic, and also in our culture that it's, for me, represents energy, and it's a, sort of a tangible representation of energy. And, you know, there are people that make money, um, and they're not necessarily good or contributing, but that's, what that's the energy they're living with. And for me, it's, it's money, and it's also, and I know later on, Napoleon Hill talks about, you know, all the other pieces of richness of life, you know, and the gratitude and so on, but it, it's very much about energy and it's similar to with the desire, um, yes, burning the boats and having that avoiding pain motivation, but also the seeking pleasure of the love obsession for that which you desire um, ties in with the energy symbolized in money for me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, Bert. Um, Bert, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, it can be a, a symbol of uh, contribution, but not necessarily. It's actually neutral. It's how we use it. I mean, there are plenty of people who have contributed wealth of ideas, or people who have been very renounced, who don't have any money, like say Mother Teresa, and uh, they contributed immensely with, without necessarily having money themselves. So. I wouldn't say that it on per se is. It's, it could be or it could be. It just depends on how it's used. Yeah, that's true. My, my personal belief on that is that uh, what Mother Teresa did is awesome, but what, what Andrew Carnegie was able to do with his billions impacted more lives. That's my personal belief. Uh, my mentor, Paul J. Meyer, uh, at age 43, he had uh, five boys, and when he passed away, he was worth a couple of billion dollars himself from the businesses he started. And he called up, and I remember uh, hearing this at, uh, at a presentation of it, he said he called up his boys while he was in uh, the Cayman Islands, and he said, you know, I made a decision today, and he says, uh, you know, I decided that I came into this world with nothing, and I'm going to go out the same way. So from this day forward, I'm going to start give, setting it up so that I give away all my money. I'm going to set up charitable trust. And he says, I don't know how, you know, you and your brothers are going to feel about it, but, you know, that's what I'm going to do. And I, you know, don't want you to feel bad. It's not about you. It's just my thing. And his older son said, you know, Dad, I don't know about the rest of my brothers, but as far as I'm concerned, you made the money. It's your decision. And that's exactly what he did. He decided, uh, and he just passed away a few years ago, he made the decision that uh, before he died, he would give away everything, and he created charitable trust. And the difference was that Paul said one thing, and, and Paul's a, a, a Christian man, very, very much so. And he made it. He said, you know, he could go and donate time to charities, but what he found is rather than donating money and donating time, he would donate his time teaching them how to create money, so that the charity would be self-sustaining as opposed to constantly depending on contributions from people. And so he taught them ways of creating a business within the business so that the message could be self-sustaining. I thought that was uh, an interesting little twist on that. What I'm going to do now is I want to introduce you to Rick. Now, Rick is, uh, uh, I was in his mastermind group uh, years ago, and he's 
took my definite major purpose statement and turned it around for me uh, from what it used to be and what you know is in the book. Uh, Rick is um, a, a speaker. He's a real estate investor, and he has a multitude of businesses. Um, he commands income of twenty-five thousand dollars for each speaking engagement. And in last night's conversation, he told me that this year's uh, income will exceed his definite major purpose statement, which you will listen to. And uh, he will earn. He's already on pace to earn two million dollars in personal income. That's not gross sales. That's personal income, which. By some standards, you know, that's not a lot of money. You know, there's people earning more than that. But for somebody that doesn't have a technology company or uh, doesn't have, uh, you know, didn't start Apple or Facebook or anything like that, in today's world, just from uh, being in, in sales and being a real estate investor, that's still darn good. I'll take $2 million a year right now. So with that, I'd like to, I'm going to mute everybody so that everybody can hear this. And... Uh, it's uh, approximately eight minutes long. All righty. Rick, I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to interview you. And I'd appreciate if you could share with the Facebook group um, some things about your journey with Think and Grow Rich and the definite major purpose statement. And uh, if you could start with Think and Grow Rich, I'd appreciate that. One of the things that I've used for the past three years is uh, been reading and rereading the book Think and Grow Rich. The book, the version that I read is the one called the 21st Century Revised Edition. It has a beige cover with green letters, and the side of the book is blue. Now, there's many versions of Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. This is my favorite version. It's the most easily readable. And chapters 2, 3, and 4... Uh, focus a lot on the chief main purpose statement or the chief statement of aim, definite main purpose statement, main definite purpose statement. You can hear it said a million different ways out there in the world, and uh, they all mean the same thing. A statement uh, that is very clear in your intention of who you're going to become, and once you become that person, what are those results going to be? And it's done in the present tense. Uh, I've, uh, I've done it in many classes. I've taught around the country. I've talked about it. It definitely came a lot out of all the personal improvement work I did. And I've heard about, uh, for the first time in my life, uh, about the Think and Grow Rich book probably about uh, 14, 15 years ago, really late in my life, in my late 30s, and had not really had a lot of experience with it until about three years ago in terms of really getting my head and my mind into it. So if you have not read that book, and if you've read other versions, this version I would... I would definitely uh, recommend that you get this version and read it. It will clarify any version that you've listened to in the past or read in the past uh, in terms of just simply understanding it at a basic level. Now, uh, that main definite purpose statement is something that I started working with in uh, the middle of 2008. And it's really a lot of the things that become very clear in terms of manifesting them because two things, intention that you truly intend to have those things to become that person that will create those results, and number two is you're very clear on what it looks like. So in other words, you have a, a mental, visual picture of who you are and the results that are in your life. In other words, if, if you're envisioning this you know, five-bedroom, three-bath home with 3,000 square feet and a three-car garage on a 20,000 square foot lot, notice how specific I said those were, that you're actually envisioning that home. Now it's talked about in The Secret, it's talked about with Jack Hanfield and Mark Victor Hansen. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of authors talk about the importance of, the, of, the, of your clarity of vision. The most important thing is that like, to have a big why and, and to be able to hold on to that big why to keep you from falling in rough moments in your life. Now, if you think about that, if that big why is so big and so powerful, it has to be very clear in your mind. It has to be so visible to you that when you are having these problems that you can grab onto it. The main definite purpose statement, having one, in other words, getting it filled out, writing it, and then saying it every morning and every night out loud, speaking it out loud. There doesn't have to be an audience. It can be just to yourself. Speaking it out loud so the universe starts to bring it towards you and you start to move towards it. Completely finish your main definite purpose statement. The first one is your strengths. You have like 
break down three strengths and attributes, like you know, things that you believe you're extremely good at. Now, of course, I'm referring to my notes here. So what would that be? Um, I'm incredibly compassionate. Um, what you, you get to name these for yourself. I'm caring. I'm considerate. I am um, hardworking. I'm dedicated. I'm you know whatever those three things are, write them down and pick your three best ones. All right. Now, after that, you want to write down three limiting beliefs. I'm not tall enough. I'm not good looking enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. Those are all limiting beliefs, and they creep into our mind. So sometimes when you have to write them down, you go, Well, I don't know. Do I have any limits? Oh, believe me, <laughs> they are they're nasty little characters because they just they dominate your mind. Their mind's not your friend. If it's left to its own vices, it will just fill you with limiting belief. So what are the three main ones, though? And, um, you know, integrity, the word integrity, remember I said that it's either you're in integrity or not, so it could be that I'm not in integrity, I'm not committed. Those are the three limiting beliefs, you know, the ones that are the strongest and the biggest in your life. Because when you're writing your statement, you want to include your attributes and strengths, and you want to include statements that are reversing your limiting beliefs. For instance, I know I have a lot of trouble personally with I say yes too much, even to things that I'm not going to end up doing, which is out of integrity. So there's a port part in my main definite purpose statement where I say, as a result of my genuine efforts and my willingness to do what I said I would do when I said I would do it. Remember, I'm speaking in present tense, and I'm reversing that limiting belief of not being in integrity. Okay, so that's what I want you to think about when you're looking at those and thinking about what you're going to write in your main definite purpose statement. I'm going to read you mine, which I know by heart because I read it out loud every morning and every night. Remember that we talk about not being afraid to tweak it, change it, work on it, not ever allow anyone to judge it. It's yours. It's your living document. And, and I like to call it a living organism as it changes and grows with you. And as your limiting beliefs no longer are your limiting beliefs and they become your strengths and your attributes, then you can change it to cover anything that you do have a limiting belief around. So mine goes like this. It is December 31st. I am so happy and grateful now that I'm receiving $100,000 per month in residual income from all of my businesses combined. I easily and effortlessly accomplish all the tasks necessary to create this amazing dream. I experience tremendous joy each day knowing that what I'm doing is being a service to others and to myself. I am now an internationally known speaker and author, traveling the world and motivating people to change their lives for the better. I earn $25,000 per engagement. I'm an example of discipline, integrity, and clear intention in my life. I'm growing daily as a Christian, as a leader, as a partner, and as a family man. As a result of my genuine efforts and my willingness to do what I said I would do, when I said I would do it, I am now free to travel the world and invest in businesses and real estate whenever and wherever I please. I do so with the love of my life and the most amazing partner ever. We share the joy of writing, speaking, and each other's company and the thrill of total relaxation. We own homes in Northern California, South Africa, and Greece. I am physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally improving my life daily. I have brought my dreams to reality by locking arms in mutual support and growth with all of my associates and all my businesses. I greet each day with tremendous gratitude for the love and support I receive through my faith in the Lord and all of those wonderful people on the road. That is my journey. Thank you, God, for it is done. Now, I, I, get, I tend to get worked up, emotional when I say that. I get like a pit in my stomach because of what I believe firmly that I'm moving towards that. Now, keep in mind, names don't have a place in this. Notice I said the love of my life. I didn't say a name. Why? Because your, your vision and, integ and, and intention and your clarity about the relationships and the money are all about them as inanimate objects because if a person matches that and you decide to bring them in, when Casey talks about it uh, in her, she says, my husband, my, she doesn't say name because when you're thinking about the relationship you want, you're thinking about how that relationship will be and how you interact with it, not so much the person. Now, it's completely fine to use the name, no problem. I have friends, lots of friends who read theirs and have the name of their husband in it. Why? They're already married. They already have a committed, uh, they, they want to see that relationship last forever. Not putting the name in doesn't mean the opposite of that. So don't, don't go thinking things. It's just about a clarity of how that relationship will be. The other thing is people have limiting beliefs around the relationships. Like, 
maybe I'm not good enough for it, or maybe I'm not the strong one in the relationship. So you want to work on those limiting beliefs and have the main definite purpose statement illustrate that perfect relationship. Notice I mentioned money twice. Both of them were exact amounts. I'm earning $25,000 per speaking engagement. Uh, that I'm bringing in $100,000 per month in income from all of my business. Those are very clear and specific. Uh, notice where I own homes. There's a lot in there. Uh, the gratitude. Notice the gratitude. And notice, of course, uh, that I was very specific about my limiting beliefs, You know, my, my willingness to do what I said I would do when I said I would do it. I also said I'm an example of discipline, integrity, and clear intention in my life, some of the things I work on daily in my life. So I hope that helps you. We can do more on this in the future if you just let me know. And uh, I really, really think this is one of the most powerful tools in creating. OK. Uh, let me unmute everybody. OK. Can everybody hear me now? I hear you. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Now, now I do apologize because we were on the phone at like one o'clock in the morning last night, and he's in California time, and I'm in New Jersey time, and the call took about an hour, and so I had to edit out some stuff, so you'll hear some clip outs and stuff like that because I didn't, I wanted it. It wasn't all one stream like I just presented it to you. It was like you know, this part here, that part there, so I just kind of edit out my stupid questions <laughs> and, and just put it all together in one strip. Um, any questions so far, please say your name if, if you have a question, and uh, go ahead. Hello. Hi. Yes. My, name, my name is Donna. Okay. Uh, I was trying to take as much notes as I could, not in terms of his mission statement, because that was his, but just how he laid it out. Um, if I can quickly review it and let me know if I missed anything. Um, you don't have to do that. that. I, have a, I have a template that I'm going to give you. Oh, um, beautiful, so, beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank so, you. So I, no problem, Donna. Thank you. Anybody else uh, have hey, any Hey, Bert, it's MP. MP, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's good, man? Hey, so there, that was awesome. Hey, you know, I was actually really paying attention to, um, you know, how he was saying, you know, the beliefs and everything like that. One question I had quickly have is, you know, he said reverse the limited beliefs basically to, you know, that you're going to do it. Um, now, he's saying write down the three limited beliefs. Now, is that something that we keep in our forefront or we're trying to, how do we weed that out or how, do, I, I guess I, I missed that little nugget there. What, what, is, what is that exercise there for? Good, good question. Let me, let me just go over the template uh, and maybe this will clear it up. So the way the statement starts is, um, well, you know what? Let's do this. Hey, Ted, are you online? Yes, sir. Why don't you uh, read your statement out loud with passion, energy, and excitement and make Rick reading his statement last night that late and tired sound like shit. Can you do that for us? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. Let's go. Here it is. It is October 31st, 2015. I, Ted Prendes, I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm receiving $8,000 per month in my income from my ID Life business. I am a national director and qualified to earn enough passive income to pay for my beautiful house and amazing vacation to Punta Cana, Dominican Republic in November, and it will allow me to move forward to being debt-free. I easily and effortlessly accomplish my 20 contacts per day, sharing five presentations per day. I attract five new loyal customers per day and five new associates per week. I attract Five new self-motivated, confident, self-reliant, responsible, entrepreneurial-minded people into my business weekly. I have a productive, focused team of servant-minded leaders who are dedicated to serving and reaching their goals of total prosperity. I experience joy and immense gratitude each day knowing that I am doing is being of service to others like myself. It is October 31st, and I am a healthy 205 pounds, strong, lean, amazingly sexy man, full confidence, and I work out at least five times a week without fail. I am organized, disciplined, servant-minded leader who looks out for the well-being of others. Thank you, God, for my life is amazing. I am trustworthy, kind, patient. I read and listen to audio and books at least one hour a day. As a result of my genuine effort and steadfast determination, I am now experiencing a peace and gratitude. 
I experience unlimited abundance in all areas of my life. I am so incredibly blessed that I get to serve my life and do my life with the woman of my dreams and serve others around the world. My team and I easily enroll 50 new customers and associates each month, and you ain't seen nothing yet, baby. I have total freedom in my life knowing that I have the ability to serve and live out the God-given potential he has blessed me with to love and respect my friends, team, and family. I am able to spend the most time with the woman of my dreams each day, week, and year. Thank you, God, for what is done. Boom! Now, before I, I, I bring somebody else on that's going to read their statement and myself, the, the format is like this. First, it's state to date. Now, this first line was taken from Bob Proctor, uh, who's another uh, speaker, personal development speaker. And the, what's changed between the old format and the new is that we state the goal in present tense. The brain, the mind does not know the difference between an imagined event and a real one. So that's why many times you're in bed and you have a nightmare and you wake up and go, oh my God, it was just an imagined event. But the, but the body doesn't know any different. Your heart responded the same way. So the first thing we do is we say the date. So you can choose a date. You know, if you're going to set a goal for the next 12 months, you can set a goal for May 16, 2016. Or if you have a goal already this year that you want to make part of your statement, you can do, you know, January 1, 2016. Or some people choose their birthday. You can say, you know, it is my birthday, February 20th, 2016. I am so happy and grateful. So the first part is state the date in present tense. Second is state your name. So it's January 1st, 2016, and I, Bert Herna. Now we invoke gratitude. So what I do and what I've taught everybody else to do is to say, I am so happy and grateful now that. So the way mine reads is it is January 1st, 2016, and I, Bert Herna, am so grateful and happy now that I am receiving <laughs> over 25000 in monthly income from my multiple businesses and my gross sales have exceeded $1 million. That's the, goal, that's the financial statement part. We then go into what's required to achieve that goal. There's going to be repetitive actions. You know, if, if, if part of your goal is losing weight, well, you know, part, that can be included in your goal statement as a sub-goal to the main goal. So if you notice in Ted, he's a lean, mean fighting machine who works out five times a week without fail. So you want to include, if that's part of what you want to do this year, if that's important to you, include it in your statement. Then we want to list the three strengths and the three weaknesses or limiting beliefs. And to answer your question, if you guys watch the video on the four personality types, you'll have an idea of what your limiting beliefs are. If you are an elephant, a person who likes to think things through, is good with, uh, is good with tasks, likes to plan, but doesn't really take a lot of action, then you need to put into your statement, I am a spontaneous person. I am an action taker. Because your normal tendency is to you know, go into uh, paralysis of analysis. If you're a lion, a person who is uh, very task-orientated, has low people skills, but good leadership skills and good task skills, then you want to be more outgoing and fun. So you would say, I am an outgoing and fun person. I know how to let loose. If you're like me, a promoter personality, or in this case, it would be the monkey, which I really don't like. But uh, The monkey personality loves to talk to people, but, but hates to, be, to do paperwork, hates to be organized, hates to be scheduled, just <laughs> likes to go out there and just be with people, be with people, be with people. Promote, 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 you know, talk, be charming, and all that. So, so if, when I read you my statement, you'll see that I have words like, you know, I am scheduled, organized. Uh, I am consistently, um, I am, uh, where is it? I also have a problem, which is that sometimes I'm not understanding and flexible enough and patient enough. So my statement is I am flexible, understanding, and patient with others. So you want to include three strengths. My strengths are I have supreme confidence and ability to take persistent action on my goals. 
Why? Because I know that's true. So I want to reinforce my strengths and I want to reinforce my weaknesses or limiting beliefs. And if you haven't done that, if you haven't watched that four personalities uh, video, please do so. It's on the group page. And by the way, I want to um, take a moment here and thank everybody. We have almost 60 people on the call today, and I am really, really grateful for everybody that uh, took time out from their Saturday. So I, I want to give you as much value for, for this call for your willingness to invest time. So, you know, if you can, I'd like you guys to give yourselves a big shout out, a big clap for, for taking the time to care enough about your, your goals in life to be on this call. So let's do it. Come on, clap, clap, clap. I know yeah. where we did. It didn't sound like 60 people. I was going to see, see if somebody was lying. Uh, it makes me smile. So now the We're next really part is uh, you want to talk about your benefits and rewards. So what are the benefits <laughs> and rewards? You heard uh, Ted's statement, and, and you heard about his benefits and rewards included in there. Because why? It, the why has to be part of it. You know, why are you doing this? Uh, and finally, the last part is what's called an NLP future pacing. So you'll hear in my vision statement, it starts with, I am now envisioning and planning. And then finally, and then finally, it talks about um, gratitude and invoking a higher power. If you heard uh, Rick's statement and you heard Ted's statement, at the end, we invoke a higher power just to let the universe know that we understand that it's not always going to be us doing it, we also want to invoke any other uh, sources of power that are out there. So before we go into answering any questions, I'd like to have another person read their vision statement. And uh, this person is a special person to me, uh, and perhaps uh, she'll share why in her vision statement. And I'd like you to do it as passionately as you can with as much excitement, enthusiasm, and energy. Remember, the key to the statement to really making it work faster for you is not to do it passively. It's like when Tony does the incantation, he tells you to get on your rebounder, start jumping up and down and do it. Well, that's good too. But if you can generate that action in your body by your voice, and you can anchor those feelings in by punching the air or banging your chest, not if you're a female, um, hmm. it also helps it because now it's anchored in. And you start talking like an Italian because your hands will be moving. <laughs> no jokes. Spanish people do it too. So, Bonnie, if you're still on the call, of course I am. Would you be kind enough to read us your statement in your most passionate, excited, and enthusiastic voice for us? Sure. You ready? Absolutely. Okay. Let's give Bonnie a hand before she goes. Let's get her in space. Woohoo! Let's go. Bonnie. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is December 31st, 2015, and I, Bonnie Sharp, am so grateful I have created the life I've always dreamed. I am receiving over $2,100 in weekly residual income from my Beachbody International business. I am a super... Hello? <laughs> Sorry, Bonnie. Sorry about that. Start again. My bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One more time. On the top. Okay. It right. is December 31st, 2015, and I, Bonnie Sharp, am so grateful I have created the life I've always dreamed. I am receiving over $2,100 in weekly residual income from my Beachbody International business. I am a super strong, five-star, diamond elite Beachbody coach and have a r rapidly growing team of coaches who are dedicated to growing their business, including five rock star diamond coaches. I easily and effortlessly accomplish all of my daily tasks, which include inviting at least 10 people a day, having one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with three coaches daily, and signing up at least one new coach per week. My five-star diamonds are all incredible leaders and grow an amazing team. I am proud and grateful that I have helped countless people to live ha happier and healthier lives as well as improving their financial success. More and more people are signing up as clients and coaches because of the powerful results that I help them get. 
I experience joy each day knowing that what I'm doing is being of service to others and myself. As a result of my genuine effort, I am now experiencing a momentum in my business that is propelling itself to such an exciting level. I am being approached daily by serious-minded people who are interested in improving their health and fitness and in the business opportunity. This has allowed me to quit my Wells Fargo job woo, and work my beach body business full-time from home. I am in the best health and physical condition of my life. My boys Joshua, Daniel, and Eli are all in fantastic health, making the right choices, and are extremely happy and successful in their lives. They are responsible, kind, considerate, and honest young men, full of integrity, capable of giving and receiving true love. They understand the importance of personal development and are always doing something to grow personally and be their best. My boys and I share a closeness and have a very healthy and loving relationship. They respect and admire me, and I am proud of the young men they have become. They share their lives with me and ask for guidance when needed. I have found the love of my life, Bert, and cherish every moment, and we share an incredible life together. We are totally and completely connected on every level in the truest sense, emotionally, intellectually, physically. Our souls are like one, feeling intertwined yet encouraging each other to be our best individually as well. We support each other like no other, always have each other's back, and we share a trust that we both value and would never risk losing. We make each other our number one before everyone else and are so grateful for each other. We both make our relationship the center of our universe and treat it as such. We both give our relationship 100% effort and consider this our greatest joy, priority, and success in life. The knowledge that we possess a bond that is so strong exists within both of us always. We live a life filled with love, passion, romance, and amazing and fulfilling intimacy and sex. We own a beautiful home that we both absolutely love and created a healthy and loving family environment with my boys. He is a fantastic stepfather to my boys and has developed his own relationship with them, each individually, which they all enjoy. We love to travel, both as a family and on romantic getaways, just the two of us. We have a cabin cruiser boat that we love to go out on on the weekends and take weekend getaways. My family and loved ones are all in wonderful health and are enjoying life to the fullest. I love seeing my family several times a year as we all spend holidays together at each other's homes or at vacation spots. I am at peace and continue to grow every day in my personal growth journey, and I'm continually improving on being my best. Thank you, God, for giving me the tools and the knowledge to help me see that I am able to create the life of my dreams and live life to my fullest potential and for giving me the strength to make it happen. It is now done. Awesome. Let's give her a big hand. Woo! Woo! Thank you. Yes, <laughs> yes. Now, some, some people have a longer statement than others, and that's okay. I mean, at max, it's going to take you five minutes to read. So if you read it twice a day, it's 10 minutes out of your life. Oh, God, such horror. <laughs> but what you're doing is you're putting it out there to the universe, and by saying it out loud, it has 10 times the impact. You know, and, and look, if you don't think that putting it on this call just internalized it for these people, you, you, you don't really understand it. Because think about it. They just put it out there to about 60 people that they don't even know. They put out their goals, their visions, their dreams. So now what's happening in their brain as, as, they, as that saturates in there? It becomes Bert. more real. Yes. Hey, just MP, real quick. I just want to say real quick because a lot of times, you know, as us being wanting to help other people, and I just kind of, it kind of hit me last week when we're kind of going over this stuff because the simple fact that we always, you know, like yourself, you're always out there, you know, you're, you're, you know, you always respond to my, you know, uh, questions and you're always posting things and you're doing this and you're doing that you know you're you're always a helping hand to everybody and you're you really want to help people and that's a lot of us on this call and a lot of and you know just like you said it only takes five minutes out of your day and what really hit me hard is that you know a lot of times we'll go help somebody else and do things for other people or tell people advice on what they need to do but when it comes to ourselves we cheat ourselves of our, the time that we need to really you know, tailor ourselves every day, at least twice a day or if not more. But that's the thing. Right. If we don't give to ourselves, I mean, it's just kind of like being on an airplane on an oxygen mask. You got to, that's what they say. Even if there's a small child next to you, save you, you put them oxygen mask first before you're able to save the person. But with this mission statement, that just, that just clearly, you know, defines that we need to make sure that we do this for ourselves before we go out there and serve others. Back to you, Bert. Yeah. MP, you're probably a dolphin. You, you're, you think of others first, and you think about contribution first. So part of your statement is that you are worthy and deserving. So because that's the opposite. Because people that contribute, 
that are dolphins. They will contribute and they will do things for others. Even It's not always a win-win they'll do for others, even if it's a win-lose where they lose out. So you want to make sure to go through that video again, really understand it, and just pick a category. And, you'll, and it's a simple and fast way to understand uh, what, what is really driving you in terms of, of, of when you were a child. Um, what video are you talking about? I'm sorry, Bert. Uh, this is I, 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 it's up on the website. It's called the four personality types. Okay. If not, uh, I'll uh, I'll tag you in it and I'll uh, pin it to the top. I'll just I'll repost it again so everybody sees it. It's a really good video, and that along with the video uh, about the four thinkers, which talks about spaghetti brain. You know, where people set a goal and as soon as they encounter an obstacle, they immediately pick another goal. You know, that that happens a lot too because people people don't understand that you have to fight through that obstacle. Look, you know, the, the, the statement I heard more, I hate it more than anything in life is when people go to me, you know what, Bert, it's okay. It wasn't meant to be. Okay? That just sets my, the hair on the back of my neck on fire because nothing is me, meant Bert? to be. No. This is Cosette because sometimes yes. you have to fight for what you want. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. We, we were born fighting for what we want. Nothing was ever given to us. Nothing is given to us. And except, except one thing, life and air. <laughs> All right, now, I'm going to read my vision statement, and then I'm not going to do the examples because we're running a little bit late, and I don't want to uh, kill everybody with time today. We're going on almost an hour. Um, I'm going to read my vision statement, and I'm going to give you how I believe it should be read. Uh, in terms of intensity so that you may use this as a model. If you don't feel comfortable reading it this way, then I challenge you to try it because it will change your life. And remember, the key is not only to set the goal, but to affirm it at least twice a day. Now, March of, up until March of last of this year, I only read my goal statement twice a day. And then I, I, I was talking to somebody in my mastermind group, and they said, look, if somebody that you, you know isn't getting the results they want from this statement, it has nothing to do with the formula, it has nothing to do with the book, and it has nothing to do with the goal statement. It, means, it just means that they have more negatives, and their self-image needs to be lifted higher. They don't believe in themselves enough. So if you have anybody like that, have them read the statement five times a day, ten times a day. Ten times I found is, is pretty much the limit. Why? Because it's all about repetition. We've heard the word no 10,000 times in our lifetime. We've created belief systems about ourselves, about what we're capable of doing based on prior failures and mistakes. So we need to overcome that, and one or two repetitions is not going to do that. It's like going to the gym. You know, there's a commercial now where the guy goes to the gym, does one push-up, and says he's done. You know, and, and the point is, you know, that, yeah, that'd be great if we could do one push-up and be muscular or eat one diet food and lose the weight, but it's that constant repetition that works in every area. So my statement, I get real involved in it, so you may want to, you know, step up, put your ear away from your phone. So I'm going to read it to you as I read it every day, and I read this. I have, I, the way you read it is set a smartphone, you know, set an alarm on your smartphone, so that uh, you remind yourself to do it. I have it set in my uh, phone to go off. So if you do the same thing, you'll be reminded and, you know, you can get cute. You know, mine says read the goddamn, you know, statement. Um, so here's how mine reads. It is January 1st, 2016, and I, Bert Herner, am so happy and grateful now that I'm receiving over $25,000 in monthly income from my multiple businesses and my growth sales have exceeded $1 million. I am a worthy, deserving man of action that easily and effortlessly accomplishes all my daily tasks and business priorities, thus ensuring my success. Scheduled and organized, I am constantly finding, consistently finding and driving massive traffic to my offers using all different traffic sources and advertising online while closing all the sales necessary to achieve my goals. I experience joy each day knowing that what I am doing is being of service to others and to myself. I am young, vibrant, handsome, and super fucking sexy man of action. I work out at least four times a week without fail. I am disciplined, organized, responsible, laser focused, punctual leader who completes all my tasks. I am strong, 
healthy and have more than enough energy to tackle any project. I am flexible, understanding, and patient in dealing with others. My greatest strength is my supreme confidence and ability to take persistent action on my goals. As a result of my concentrated energy and steadfast determination, I am now experiencing the pleasure of driving my brand new Mercedes-Benz SL Class Roadster Convertible. I have saved over $100,000 this year, and I am enjoying a one-week getaway vacation with Bonnie, the woman of my dreams. I am enjoying unparalleled love, romance, connection, and mind-blowing sex with this incredible woman who fulfills my every need and, and I fulfill hers. The connection that we goes beyond a physical one. Our connection exists on every plane in existence. It is as if we are one. We are enjoying mind-blowing sex in every position, in every state, in every country that we have chosen to visit. I am now envisioning daily and planning and organizing for my plan to form a partnership in business and in life with Bonnie and living a life that is unparalleled in abundance, health, excitement, travel, adventure, financial independence, and love. Thank you, God, for it is done. Hey, I'm a guy. You know, I got to put something there that motivates me. Now, Bonnie, you know already <laughs> love it. So, so you know, you have to make it something that when you say it, if you don't get emotional when you're saying it, you got to go back and rewrite it. Uh, Rick says, you know, this is a living document. This is a, a work in progress. Uh, I'm on my sixth revision for the year. You know, just little tweaks there and there to make it sound better, to make it drive me more. Why? Because when I get done reading that, you know, I don't want to go sit down and watch TV. I want to go and, and get shit done. But, you know, what do most people do? They set the goal and then, you know, they, you know, they set the goal. Nothing. So that's the power. That is the power. Saying that statement a minimum of twice a day the way I did it, you know, if you're at work, you know, I, I have a copy laminated and I stick it in my shower. So as I got that hot water going in my in my bath, I'm screaming and yelling and my roommate thinks I'm nuts. You know, but that's okay. You know, I'll be getting out of here in a few more days. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, talk about that. Um, if you're driving, turn up the music. Put the vision statement, take it right to your dashboard. Get involved, scream it, put rocky music on, whatever it takes for you to get yeah. in an emotional state. If you like to, to do cardio, you know, or, or like to run, listen to it, record it, listen to it while you're running. Think of, you know, repetitions. The more repetitions you can get in, the faster the goal will happen. And so that is the most important thing I want to communicate to you today in the in this, uh, chapter on desire. The way you build desire is by having the dream but constantly affirming it and making it top of mind. So that's the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning and the last thing you think about at night. In the group, I will give you the template so you don't have to remember all this stuff that we discussed if you didn't, weren't able to take notes. I also have another five or six examples of different um, statements from people that are chiropractors, real estate agents, insurance agents, uh, all state agents, and stuff like that. So I will post that PDF as well uh, later today. Uh, if, if not the latest by Monday morning, it'll be up there for you. Uh, the recording for this will probably be up by Monday or Tuesday. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop talking now and just I want to get some feedback on what you guys think of the statement, any questions that you might have, and then after that we'll sign off and uh, go about our getting our yeah, done for the day. So uh, just say your name if you want to make a comment or ask a question. Uh, Donna, I have a quick question. Uh, the the first the the first gentleman on the phone that read the the uh, statement that read, read his statement. If he's yeah. comfortable enough, can he post it on the on the page? Because a, a lot of his goals are similar to mine, and I'd love to like grab some of those key phrases he said that were really powerful. Um, I'll I'll ask him. Okay. Ted, are you still on the line? He may not be on anymore. Okay. But I'll ask him. I'll message him. Anybody else have any questions or anything? Yeah, hey, I'm still on the line. You're still on, Ted? Yeah. She was asking if you wouldn't mind posting uh, your uh, vision statement on the group so she can use it as a template. Oh, no. No, that's, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, I'll post it. 
Awesome. Awesome. There's your answer. Thank you. Let's Thank give you. them a round of applause for stepping Thank up you. and uh, yeah. putting it out there. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Hey, yeah, hi Christy. there. I have a question. Sure. I have a question. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, this is uh, Blake. I find it a little bit overwhelming. And um, is it better in that case to start with a smaller mission statement or definite purpose with a shorter time frame to get into the habit of doing this? What do you mean, like doing a 90-day goal on it? Yeah, something like six months, something definite, because um, I hear what you've read out, but it feels to me almost like an essay. And at this stage, I, I, I want something that I can commit to, which is bite-sized. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I don't. we don't recommend doing 90-day goals because you're not going to really get enough repetitions in there. This goal statement is addressing a lot of issues. It's addressing it's addressing limiting beliefs, which is really what's stopping you. And and in 90 days, you're not going to build the belief to tackle a, a aggressive goal. Uh, typically, what we do is we're looking to set an income goal. Uh, if you're in sales or self-employed, you can choose a goal that's maybe 120% of what you're currently earning, or double what you're earning. Uh, if you work for somebody else. You know, the income goal may, may not be that, it may be more of a savings aspect, like mine has a savings aspect. Uh, you know, typically you want to make it at least a half a page, you know, and, and you can cut out a lot of the stuff. The, the key point is that you have the structure, and, and we'll go over that in the, in the template uh, when I post it. Uh, and then you, you make it the way you want and what feels comfortable for you. If you like a longer statement, do a longer statement. The only thing is I would say stay away from a short-term goal. Put that as a sub-goal. So your sub-goal may be, you know, your sub -goal may be you know, like uh, hey, the yard, you know, the yard is wait. looking crazy, huh? You may do, uh, hold on, I'm going to have to mute everybody now. Hey, <laughs> hold on. So what you might want to do is do what Ted did, and he put a sub-goal in there of what he wants to weigh uh, in terms of weight, and you can put a deadline on that if you have a, a shorter range goal. But the key is you want to have the, the statement. You want to be able to memorize the statement. You want to be able to... Oh, I know. That was a good idea. You, can you mute yourself back there, that is right? in the background there, please? No. Thank you. Uh, you want to give it enough time because three months is not going to oh, be yeah. enough time to change any habits. Oh, you and that's what really this is up. all about. I'm just empty it up. So, anybody yeah, else I have see. a question? Thank you very much. Sure, no problem. Anybody else? Are you sure? Oh, because the grass is that high, huh? <laughs> no, no? All right. Too. Nobody else has any questions. Uh, we're going to end it now. And uh, as I said, I'll post some of this material on the uh, page, if not yeah, today, by tomorrow. Like, what, so I want to thank everybody for participating, and I hope that you were able to get some value from this fall. Thank, 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 thank you. 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 Thank you.